Today I'm going to talk to you about five things that every man can learn from a true southern gentleman. Stick around guys. Hey, hey, YouTube, welcome back to Arabin Outdoors. Hey, I'm Arabin, but you knew that, didn't you? First of all, I want to say thank you for tuning in to Arabin Outdoors. I greatly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please take a moment, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you click the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. I greatly appreciate it. And if you like this video at the end, Make sure you give me a thumbs up so that YouTube will know that you like this kind of stuff. Alright, so, five things that every man can learn from a true Southern gentleman. Guys, this is coming from the heart. As a self-proclaimed Southern gentleman being raised in the South and taught these ways, I feel it's important to share this with everyone that I can. You may agree or disagree at the end of this video. Feel free to go into the comment section below and let me know what you think. But if you're from the South, you'll already know what I'm talking about. If you're not from the South, or if you're not even from America, then this might be foreign to you, but I still consider it great advice as a man in general. So, let's go forward. Southern gentleman is a big, big umbrella, okay? There are a lot of things that make up what it takes to be a Southern gentleman. And these are all things that I was taught, that my parents were taught by their parents, and so on and so on. And they're things that I think are crucial that need to continue to be taught for future generations to come. So I want to talk about five things, like I said. And uh, briefly, those five things are manners, chivalry, manliness, appearance, and respect. All right? So underneath this large umbrella of Southern gentlemen, we have these five smaller umbrellas. And underneath each of those umbrellas are a list of things that go along with them. So let's just start with the first one that I mentioned, manners. In the South, people have good manners, okay? That's what we're taught as children, and that is what we continue to teach our children. And we're talking about things that, when taught early, become part of who you are. And a true Southern gentleman doesn't even have to think about these things. It's embedded in their heart, in their soul. It's part of who they are. When I'm saying manners, I'm talking about things like saying thank you and please. Okay, there's nothing wrong with a man saying please. Regardless, if you're at Waffle House and you want a refill on your sweet tea, there's nothing wrong with the, having the waitress come over and saying, could I please get a refill of my sweet tea? That sounds a lot better than give me a refill on this tea. It's one short word, takes no extra time, and uh, is just a sign of a true Southern gentleman. Also, thank you. Anytime a man accepts something, he should say thank you, regardless of how big or small that item is. If someone hands you something, thank you. When the waitress brings the refill of sweet tea back to your table, thank you. It's simple. Two words. Thank you. This also goes towards compliments. When someone compliments you on something, the best way to accept a compliment is to say simply thank you. Other things that gentlemen say in the South are excuse me or pardon me. Excuse me and pardon me 
Again, it's just polite. It's good manners. It's a couple of words. But it's a true sign that you are a respectful person. You have respect for this other person. Just like please and thank you. You don't look at a person in a subservient position as beneath you or below you. Okay? Also, sir and ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Saying sir and ma'am to those who are older than you or in a higher position than you is a sign of respect. And down here in the South, we say, yes, sir, no, sir, no, ma'am, yes, ma'am. When I was growing up, if my mama asked me a question and I said, yeah, she'd be like, yes, what? I'd be like, yes, ma'am. That's how I learned to say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yes, sir, no, sir. Something that I still do today. Again, a combination of a couple of words makes all the difference in the world. It's a sign of respect. Respect is something that you're going to hear a lot because respect is kind of the core of a southern gentleman. What I just talked about was more of a, a verbal type of good manners, but good manners also includes basic good etiquette, table etiquette. Um, when you're with a lady, for example, and you're being led to a table by a hostess, always allow the lady to go first, and then you follow. When you arrive at the table, pull out, if it's a chair, pull out the chair for the lady and then then when she sits down you sit down if you're at a table and that lady needs to excuse herself when she stands you stand when she then you sit back down when she returns to the table to sit down you stand again you pull out the chair for her, push it back in, and then you sit down. Again, these are things that are just inbred in the Southern Gentleman. Something that we naturally do. I could do a whole separate video on table etiquette. You know, passing the food to the right. And a lot of other things, but that would be a whole other video. Down in the South, we say grace. Don't eat until somebody says grace. Don't eat before everyone else receives their food. Okay? Alright, so just have good manners. And that's something I think people need to learn because it seems like people are just being a lot more rude these days than days past. You've heard of Southern Hospitality. Well, that's because it's a real thing, and it does exist, and it doesn't exist all over America. All right, let's move on to the second umbrella under the Southern Gentleman category, and that's chivalry. All right, guys, we're going to be talking about, you know, you've heard chivalry is dead. Well, not in the South. Not completely, not yet, and that's the purpose of this video. When I talk about chivalry, I'm talking about, again, simple little gestures that show respect for other people. Generally, when you think of chivalry, you're thinking of a man's actions towards a, a female's actions. And simple things like opening the door, okay? Now... This is a whole category here where it doesn't apply just to females. But if you're walking into a business that has a door and you have observed, sense, or notice that there are people behind you and you're going to be the first one to go through the door, open the door, step, step aside, allow the other person 
to go in, and then you go in. That is chivalry. When you're walking a lady from, say, the restaurant back to your vehicle, okay? Open the car door for her. Wait for her to get in. Then close the car door. Simple, right? But how many people do that? True Southern gentlemen do. Another thing, when you're walking with a lady from the restaurant to the car, if you're walking on a sidewalk, on a street, the gentleman always walks on the side closest to the street, protecting his lady from any dangers from the street. Simple gesture. Something you shouldn't have to think about, but how many of you actually do that? I talked about the chairs, pulling out the chairs. That is another, that's good manners, but it's, but it's also an act of chivalry. Let's say, for example, you are on a public transit authority vehicle, be it a subway or a bus, and you're there, and you're sitting down. All the other seats are full. You come to a stop. More people come on board, and you notice a female, a pregnant woman, an elderly woman, or an elderly gentleman standing with no seat, of course, a true southern gentleman is going to stand up and say, Ma'am, would you please take my seat? A simple gesture. And of course, just the general, ladies first. You've all heard that, ladies first. That's a simple act of chivalry that, that can be done easily. Alright, so let's move on to the third category, which is manliness. Um, a lot of people might cons confuse manliness with macho-ness. Macho-ness. macho, -ness. macho, -ness. macho -ness. A gentleman doesn't have to be macho. Alright? What I mean by manliness, I mean basically be a man. Okay? Things that a gentleman does that make him a man is one... He always speaks his mind with respect and politeness, if in disagreement. All right? You're having a conversation with another person. You disagree with what they're saying. A true Southern gentleman doesn't become belligerent and start arguing with that person. But a man does stand up for himself. He does state his opinion and let his opinion be known but he does so in a polite respectful manner it might come to a point where you just disagree they're not going to agree with you you're not going to agree with them the appropriate thing to say is well I understand what you're saying but I disagree we're probably just better to leave it at that a true gentleman knows how to use discretion before speaking. In the South, we don't have to win the argument, okay? But it is important that as a man, we let people know where we stand. We do it firmly, but politely. Also, shaking hands. That's another thing that a true gentleman does. One thing I learned as a kid is growing up is uh, always shake hands with another man regardless of whether that person is younger than you or older than you. I shake hands with little kids. They get a kick out of it. I shake hands with people that are my age, people that are older. And again, it's a respect thing. Okay? Never shake hands with someone while you're sitting down. If you're sitting down, someone approaches you, the proper thing for you to do is to stand up and shake their hand. And speaking of handshakes, when you shake hands with someone, number one, look that person dead in the eye, 
shake their hand firmly. Now, you're not about to have an arm wrestling competition. It's not a matter of who can squeeze the hardest. But a nice, firm, short handshake with maybe a little bit of a squeeze exerts confidence and it shows the person a little bit about who you are. Regarding handshakes, things to stay away from is the limp fish handshake. We've all shaken hands with somebody who just kind of puts their hand up there like that. I don't know if they're expecting you to like kiss their hand or whatever. I don't kiss anybody's hand. Don't offer up a, a limp hand as a handshake. Okay? Uh, the other thing, and you've probably been on the receiving end of this, the guy that has a little bit of the macho attitude as opposed to the gentleman attitude who feels like he needs to see if he can break your hand almost. Uh, then again, there are those that are the long handshakers. You want to avoid being a long handshaker. Okay? Shake their hand short. One, two seconds. Maybe one or two nods. That's it. Then pull back. Alright? Nobody wants to sit there holding hands with you, all right, for a minute while you're having a conversation. There's nothing more uncomfortable than that. And then you've got the hand shakers, the ones who are like, like this. Like they're going to pull your arm out of socket. Nobody likes that, so don't be one of those kind of getting away from the southern gentleman thing here. We're talking about handshaking. But handshaking is part of being a southern gentleman. There's a proper way to do it, is what I'm saying. Uh, I already talked about uh, using discretion before speaking. A southern gentleman rarely uses cursing. Uh, it's kind of deemed as disrespectful. And again, we go back to that line with respect, okay? People who just F this, GD that, MF that all the time. Nobody respects a person that speaks that way. Again, respect. You see how we keep coming back to that? Other things that a real man does is he does what he says he's going to do. Uh, especially down here in the South. If you say you're going to do something, you do it. Another thing is be on time. Alright, I was taught, I was taught that early is on time, on time is late, and late is never acceptable. If I had an appointment at 9 o'clock, in other words, that's when I said I'm going to be there at 9 o'clock, I'm going to be there at 9 o'clock. Sometimes, I'd have to sit around, parked around the corner for 5 or 10 minutes to arrive at their door at 9 o'clock. People respect that. There's that word again, respect. But say you're going to do something, do it. And be on time. Always. Let's move on to the next thing, number four, appearance. And this, again, this could be a whole video. And maybe I should have done this video in parts. Appearance, alright? We're talking about things like dress. We're talking about grooming, okay? The way you present yourself, okay? I do not understand people walking around. You've all seen the Walmart videos. I've not, I don't understand people walking around town in pajama bottoms with a dirty shirt, flip-flops and socks. And their hair all sticking up. I. This shows me that this person has no self-respect. Okay. Much less respect for anyone else. It takes just as much effort. To put on a nice pair of pants. As it does. To put on an old raggedy pair of pants. It takes just as much effort. To put on a nice shirt. Compared to an old raggedy dirty, stained shirt. Okay? Take the time to show some self-confidence, to show that you have respect for yourself, and that you care about how you present yourself 
to others. If you don't, then there might be an issue somewhere with lack of self-respect. Grooming. Gentlemen, shave. If you don't shave and you have a beard, keep that beard groomed, okay? It takes a little bit of extra effort, okay? I'm, I've got a video coming up, I just haven't posted it yet, about grooming for the gentleman. So look for that in the future. But keep your mustache neat, keep your beard groomed and trimmed. If you don't have facial hair, then shave, okay, every day. Men, keep your nails trimmed and clean. Women don't want to see men with nails as long as theirs, with grease and dirt, all right, all scrounged up in there. Not to say that if you work in grease and dirt throughout the day while you're at work, your hands are going to look like that. I understand that. But if you're going out, or as soon as you get home, or if you're going to lunch, wash your hands. Keep your nails short and trimmed, okay? Shower on a daily basis. Keep your hair, if you're not wearing a hat, keep your hair combed, okay? In regards to dress, though, dress for the occasion, okay? I'm not saying that as a southern gentleman, I walk around every day, all day in a seersucker suit with a bow tie. I can't wear ties anymore, and I really hate that because I like classic men's style. I enjoy wearing ties. But down south, blue jeans, cowboy boots, a flannel shirt, acceptable. If I was going to a fine restaurant, I wouldn't be dressed like I am right now. I wouldn't be wearing jeans and boots. I wouldn't be wearing this flannel shirt. But if I'm going to the Waffle House to eat, yeah, I'll wear jeans and a flannel shirt. If I'm going, you know, to Sportsman's Warehouse to shop, yeah, I'll wear this. If I was going to a formal party or just a party in general, yeah, I'll wear my seersucker suit without the bow tie now. But wear clothes that properly fit. Tuck in your shirt if you're going out in public. Wear pants that fit properly. Match your belt to your shoes. I think I'm going to do a video on that. I know I also have a hat video coming up. I'm going to go through my collection of hats and hat etiquette. So look for that in the future. But anyway, I told you I digress. Let's go on. What item am I on now? The last thing, and we've talked about it throughout this whole video, is respect. Okay? A true Southern gentleman respects everyone, regardless of their race, age, gender, etc., etc., so on. Respect people. If you don't agree with that person, still have respect for their opinions. If you don't agree with a person's lifestyle, that's okay. You don't have to, but show respect to that person. Respect that they have opinions. They have their way of living. You know, we've all heard the golden rule, treat others as you would like to be treated yourself. And that's so true, especially for the Southern gentleman. Treat people with respect. If you want to be respected, you cannot get that without first respecting others. Respect is shown through good manners and through proper etiquette. It's shown through chivalry. It's shown through your appearance. Okay, and how you present yourself. Okay, southern man presents himself with pride of his heritage, with confidence. When you're having a conversation with someone, don't always be disrupting other people. Listen to what they're saying. While you're listening, show that you're listening. Nod your head occasionally. A 
agree with him. That's a good point. I never thought of that before. You know, you're right. Let them know that you're listening. But respect is the key word. Respect other people. If you're still with me, I appreciate it so much. I just recently hit my goal of 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to all of you who have subscribed. I can't express how happy I was to wake up that morning and see that I had hit 1,000 subscribers. It was my goal to do that by the end of the year. And here we are, mid to late November, and I've already hit it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It's raining outside. You can probably hear it. That's why I'm not outdoors today. But until next time, keep calm, carry on, keep it outdoors.